The tennis racket theorem. Will Earth suddenly flip its axis? Usually, scientific topics have very strange names that might not be so funny or attractive. But this isn't the case of the tennis racket theorem, also known as the intermediate axis theorem. This subject is strictly linked to a very weird event a Russian cosmonaut called Vladimir Jenabekov observed while in space in 1985. By removing a screw in the orbiting station during an experiment, he made it turn around an axis, but suddenly the bolt started to change the direction of rotation by itself without any external help. He was really surprised, and the event took its name after the scientist the Jenna Bekov effect. But what is the link with the tennis racket theorem? Have you ever tried to flip a phone or a racket? Isn't there something really strange and inexplicable? Have you noticed it? Well, if not, this video will introduce you to the bizarre behavior of rotating objects. Do you know that the flipping of a little bolt was able to scare scientists to death, suggesting a possible ending of human life on Earth? Do you want to know more about that? Stick with me and I'll tell you everything in a moment. Some puzzling questions have been already made, but in order to give an appropriate answer to all of them, it's surely better to start from something that has been discovered many years ago. Classical physics, primarily created by Newton in the 16th century, was the most important field of research in science until the late 19th century. In this length of time, the majority of scientists studied planets that are used to have a circular movement around their star. Moreover, they also happen to rotate around their axis. And this is the reason why the sun seems to move in the sky and why our days are only partially illuminated by solar light. In order to study these phenomena, physicists elaborated an entire theory according to Newton's principles about moving objects and particles, classical mechanics. In the 19th century, major developments were made in this discipline, and the behavior of rotating bodies was precisely described. Some simple quantities were defined to have a useful description of the spinning object. Firstly, the moment of inertia relative to a rotation axis was introduced. Practically, it is the product between the mass of an object and the square of its distance from the axis of rotation. Secondly, the angular moment was defined as a crucial quantity of classical mechanics. It is the product of the moment of inertia and the angular velocity at which an object spins. Furthermore, a very interesting theorem is that the angular moment of a system is always conserved. A funny example about this is that of an ice dancer. Have you ever noticed what they do while they rotate on their skates? What happens when they slow down? They start with open arms, but they gradually gather them around their body. Why do they act like that? By moving their arms near their body, they reduce the moment of inertia because they are less distant from the axis of rotation. Since the angular moment must remain the same and the inertia has decreased, the velocity needs to grow to compensate. Consequently, they start to rotate at a higher rate, managing to continue spinning for more and more time. To sum up, the minimum the velocity, the bigger the inertia, and the lower the inertia, the higher the velocity. Moving on with this topic, each symmetric object has a principal moment of inertia. Moreover, the inertia of a spinning body has always three different components in which it can be dismantled. As an example, a tennis racket with its face laying horizontally can spin around three different axes, the handle axis, the vertical axis, which is perpendicular to the handle and the horizontal axis perpendicular to the handle. They're also known as third principle axis, first principle axis, and intermediate principle axis of rotation. These names are linked to the moment of inertia. The first axis is the one with the bigger moment as the majority of the body is distant from the axis. 
whereas the third axis is the one with the smaller inertia, as the body is really near the axis. In addition, we must introduce kinetic energy, which is the energy of a moving object. For a rotating body, it is derived as half the moment of inertia multiplied by the square of the angular velocity. As a result of this definition, the minimum kinetic energy is reached when the body rotates around the axis with the biggest moment of inertia, and the higher kinetic energy state is that one of a body spinning around the axis with the lowest inertia. Did you know that there are three equations that link all these quantities together, explaining a wide range of ordinary phenomena? Want to know their names? The Euler's equations. These three equations show the relation between the rotation of a body around an axis to that around the others. Unfortunately, the math that describes this subject is a bit difficult. But don't worry, it is not necessary to understand the tennis racket theorem. This last one is a direct consequence of the Euler's equations. What did the theorem say? It states that the rotation around the intermediate axis is totally unstable and causes a rotation around the other ones. What is a stable movement? In physics, we used to deal with different kinds of trajectories, but some of them are very distinguishable from the others and happen to repeat in several events. The most famous ones are the harmonic motion and the exponential motion. The first one is that of a pendulum. It can be described as a stable and constant movement that has always the same periodic repetition in time. On the other hand, the second one is pretty unstable, even though it's a bit more complicated to understand. As an example, let's imagine a ball on the top of a very high hill or a track on a roller coaster. Have you ever been on one of them? A small movement in one direction makes the object fall lower and lower from the top and might scare you to death. As a matter of fact, this is the definition of an unstable movement. A small change in the position makes the ball go far distant from the equilibrium point. We use the name exponential because mathematically speaking, this movement is perfectly described by an exponential function. But this point is not so interesting, so we'll skip this part. The intermediate axis theorem has even that funny name because the simplest way of showing its consequences is trying to flip a tennis racket. This can be demonstrated with the following experiment. Hold the tennis racket at its handle with its face being horizontal and try to throw it in the air so that it will perform a full rotation around the horizontal axis perpendicular to the handle and try to catch the handle. In almost all cases during that rotation, the face will also have completed a half rotation so that the other face is now up. By contrast, it is easy to throw the racket so that it will rotate around the handle axis, the third principal axis, without accompanying half rotation around another axis. It is also possible to make it rotate around the vertical axis perpendicular to the handle, the first principal axis, without any accompanying half rotation. The same happens with a mobile phone. If you lay it with the screen up and try to flip it around the horizontal axis, passing at half of its length, it will start to rotate around the other axis. If we lived in an ideal empty space, the racket wouldn't complete half a rotation around the other axis. Therefore, as the rotation around the intermediate axis can undergo a slight misdirection due to friction, the instability of this motion takes the control and causes the 180 degrees of extra rotation. However, the experiment can be performed with any object that has three different moments of inertia, for instance with a book, remote control, or a smartphone. The effect occurs whenever the axis of rotation differs only slightly from the object's second principal axis. And the experiment was made with another object, indeed. However, it wasn't a premeditated experiment but happened randomly in a space station in 1985, making a Russian cosmonaut totally puzzled by what he was seeing. Do you remember his name? Vladimir Janabekov. Although he was initially intrigued by this phenomenon, 
After further analysis, he discovered that what he had seen was just an implication of classical mechanics, which was developed more than 150 years before and that he had previously studied. Nevertheless, this funny and silly theorem brought uncertainty in the scientific community. Major concern arose as the hypotheses of a similar behavior could be assumed by the Earth. Some physicists were scared by the idea of our planet flipping its axis of 180 degrees. The outcome of such a catastrophic event would be terrible. Imagine living in a world in which the Antarctic suddenly takes the place of the South Pole and vice versa. Are you afraid by this possibility? If yes, don't go nuts. I'll rapidly comfort you by explaining that such a consequence is impossible. More and more experiments were taken on the International Space Station with other types of objects. They tried to make a liquid bottle flip over its different axes. And a strange event happened. The body started to rotate around the axis with the largest moment of inertia, which is the one with the minimum kinetic energy. Why does this happen? When a fluid is inside the body, energy isn't conserved due to friction and heat dissipation. As a result of that, the object loses energy and tends to the rotation axis, which requires less energy to spin. A similar event might happen if the body doesn't contain liquid, but has a shape that favors friction. Returning to our major concern, will Earth flip its axis of rotation and suddenly causing the possible destruction of cities and landscapes? Obviously not. And why? Because Earth is not properly a rigid body as the tennis racket or Janet Bekov's screw. As a matter of fact, Earth is composed also by a lot of fluids, both externally and internally. Consequently, in the course of its history, it has gradually lost energy and has started to rotate around the axis with the minimum kinetic energy and the maximum moment of inertia, which is the axis that passes through North and South Pole. In conclusion, the astonishing Janabekov effect discovered by the Russian cosmonaut in 1985 is just a small derivation of classical mechanics, particularly of Euler's equations about rotating rigid bodies. Although this theorem has some funny applications as the one we have seen with the tennis racket, its conclusions are very deep and have temporarily made a full community of trained physicists doubt about the behavior of their own planet. Whenever you'll go have an easy tennis match with your friends, those rackets will have a totally different meaning for you. This video ends here. Thanks for watching everyone. Did you find this topic exciting? Are you amazed by the consequences that a small and simple theorem can have on our entire planet? Are you afraid by the hypotheses of a flipping earth with a consequent destruction of humanity? Is there anything more you want to hear about the Janet Bekov effect and the classical mechanics or the rotation of rigid bodies? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.